going to my old Luffy server to this new case. Now, I wasn't originally planning this, but uh, I found this case for 10 bucks at a yard sale and I couldn't resist, so here we go. Alright, so before we begin here, let's go over kind of what we have in here. So for our CPU, we have a uh, Intel Core i3-2120. Now this is a low-end uh, SAN hybrid, but I don't really need a whole lot for the media server back here. Um, as far as uh, graphics, we have a GTX 960, uh, 4 gig super clocked, um, kind of overkill for back here, but that's kind of what I had, so in it went. Uh, also, we have a USB 3 card, as um, the Sandy Bridge does not natively support 3.0. So uh, in order to get 3.0, you need an expansion card. Uh, now, also down here we have a um, some Hop Hog uh, TV tuner, because this is also uh, how we watch TV back here. So there's that. Um, now, one thing I should say is uh, we will be losing the 3.0 card, uh, as I need more SATA ports than uh, this motherboard has. And so the 3.0 card is getting replaced with a SATA controller. Uh, all of this is powered by a, uh, well, basic 350 watt power supply. Um, I think the fan might be a little iffy. I think the ball bearing, the ball bearing is going out of it, in it or something. But um, once it gets going, it, it's it's fine. As far as our boot drive, we have a bit of an interesting thing here. It is a Apple 256 gig SSD. Now, uh, where this came from, uh, well, we found a, uh, that was old, uh, not really old, but kind of really destroyed MacBook uh, on the side of the road. The crazy thing is, is uh, even though it's SATA, they, uh, they kind of changed the shape of it so you can't really plug it into anything normal. Uh, at first I thought it was uh, MSATA, but it's something proprietary, or at least the shape anyway, it's, it's still SATA. So, uh, yeah, I had to get a uh, real funky adapter here to be able to use it like this, but it's been working, and it's been working well. Uh, as far as our hard drives, uh, we got a bunch here, um, and some that are not here. So, uh, alright, let's, uh, let's begin the build. As you can see here, this is the uh, Apple SSD and the uh, adapter. Bit unusual, but it works just fine. be wondering how I'm going to be mounting so many drives in this case. Well, you're about to see here. A uh, bit of an unusual solution, but I hope it should still work.
so we're back. Um, so I was having some difficulty with the front panel header here. Uh, Dell didn't really label it and I couldn't really find anything online so I kind of had to figure it out based upon the old connector here and uh, so this is kind of what I found here, not the best, but uh, yeah, so that'd be the front of the case and otherwise this would be the wiring of the front panel for this board here which is from the um, Dell Inspron uh, 620. So one thing I didn't mention before is um, I will be putting in some internal USB ports for uh, a mouse and uh, Bluetooth. So that way I freeze up ports on the outside of the case since I will only have one USB port on the front of the case. All right.
All right, so it's the next day here, and I uh, got a bit of an update here for you. So, uh, as you can notice, some things have changed. Um, originally, I had only wanted to put uh, three of the drives here, not all four, but um, unfortunately, the uh, power connector on the graphics card uh, was in the way of that, so I had to change it around. So instead, all four drives are mounted over here. They are pretty secure, but um, and hopefully that works out there. And uh, the issue with that, that, that caused was that um, originally I had the SSD mounted down here, uh, which would have been underneath the drives, but with the fourth drive, uh, it could no longer fit. So I moved that over here. Um, so that worked out there. Uh, the other thing that happened, uh, well, that I realized is um, these internal USB ports over here. Uh, that I was planning on using for the mouse and Bluetooth, uh, it's not working. So um, I'll have to figure that out. Uh, maybe it's something in the BIOS or something. Uh, we'll see, or maybe it's just uh, the thing I was using. But um, we'll see. I got a few things I can try there. And then the other real big thing that I uh, need to do here is um, the, the fan and the power supply. As I previously mentioned, it has a bad bearing, but I think I'm going to try and replace that. Um, here, I'll give you a sample of kind of what that sounds like. Uh, kind of noisy. We'll plug that in, we'll turn it on, and... Yeah. Uh, it doesn't sound good. Um, it does usually kind of fix itself after about 15 to 20 minutes of running, but... Ideally, I'd like to fix that so it doesn't do that if I can, uh, so we'll see about that. I have a second fan, it looks like it'll fit, uh, so yeah, we're going to try that. Uh, let me just turn this off now. I did do a test boot, all the drives and everything are detected. Uh, and then, um, the only other thing that's really going to change is, uh, potentially this, uh, hot swap bay in the front here. Uh, originally I thought the cover was going to uh, cover that up, but as I realized only now, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's not going to work. So, I'm not, I don't really uh, want it to be open like this since it's a more uh, permanent installation here, so I might move back to the uh, metal tabs that I used before, even though I was trying to get away from those. But, um, yeah, let's get to it. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get this done. Some more bad news here. Uh, while undoing the first screw on the uh, power supply, I dropped it in there and uh, I can't seem to find it. So um, hopefully it's nowhere that will cause problems. fan is uh, soldered in here. Uh, let's see, I might cut the wires out of there.
Okay, so uh, here's the old fan, one that I pulled out, the one with bad bearings in it, and I have replaced the uh, replaced it with a new one. So let's see if it uh, did the trick here. Power on. Set the power button, and that's a whole lot better. Spinning. So there we go. One problem solved. On to the next. Okay, so I suppose next up uh, I'll try and see if I can fix the internal USB ports here. Um, first I'll check the BIOS, uh, see if it's something that's maybe set in there wrong or something. Uh, maybe it's you know, enabled, disabled or something. If not, I have a second board here. I don't, don't know, uh, I've never really used that one before. Uh, so we'll try this one. Not quite as nice as the other one, but we'll see if it does the trick. Okay, so it doesn't appear to be a uh, BIOS thing, so we'll try a different uh, connector then. We'll see if that works. Okay, so upon further investigation, it appears that uh, this actually is working. I'm not quite sure uh, what was up with it the first time I checked, but it's working now. So that's nice. Don't need to do anything more. Okay, so next order of business, I'm going to say, is to uh, change out the um, hard drive mount here. I'm going to take out the hot swap bay and uh, move back to these metal tabs here. I don't particularly like them, but um, they work and it's a bit more uh, permanent than this uh, drive bay here. I don't know, maybe I might get a different one in the future, but for now, I think this is what I'm going to do. side panel. Let's see how it does. Having drives from how I originally planned to mount them, 
uh, not really be able, being able to use the um, internal USB ports that I put in there just because the um, wireless dongles, uh, the signal doesn't really make it through the case, so I, I can't really uh, use them in there, unfortunately. Um, and it's also unfortunate that I couldn't use the um, hot swap bay that I thought had a more uh, secure closing on the front of it, but instead it was just open, so. But in the end, it managed to work out. I just used the old uh, metal tabs that I used on the old case there, uh, as you probably saw. Um, anyway, uh, probably do some benchmarks, and, uh, and thanks for watching.